Yo, yo, what's poppin' everybody? King Siler. Welcome to the predictions. King of the Ring, October the 16th. Hopefully you guys join us. We're gonna be there. We're gonna have a cracking. It's gonna be a night of fun. So, this is the prediction list. So before we even get started, because I know y'all waiting to kill me, y'all waiting to jump up in here and say act like I don't know what I'm talking about. Just please remember that it's a prediction. These are not ironclad in any way, shape, form, or fashion. This is just my opinion. I'm just giving what I believe is gonna happen. It's a prediction. You know, I like to be wrong. Anybody that knows me knows that I like to be wrong. Just let me be fuel to the fire, baby. You know what I'm saying? Just go ahead and, you know, I'm gonna lab extra hard just so I can throw this in Silas' face whenever I win. I'm, I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it, baby. Ain't no thing. Let's go ahead and get it cracking. So, we're just gonna do, this is gonna be the first night, day one. So, first battle of the night, we got Dolo versus Ular. So, I'll start this off with a little bit of characteristics as I'll do for each battle, um, and then I'll give my opinion as far as who I think is going to win, and then as to why. Uh, so, U Law is very caddy, material based, and hat trick heavy. Uh, he's a young hitter as far as in the South. Uh, Dolo is a buckhead, you know, um, of course, and we're all buck. I understand that buck is like the, you know, the standard style as far as for all crumpers out here. You should be buck. The same way in poppers, you should be funky, you know what I'm saying? Or house heads, you should be soulful, whatever the case may be. But you feel what I'm saying when I say buckheads. Like, yo, Dolo is a buckhead through and through. Uh, he's a power mover as well, moves with a lot of power. Um, and it's bred for battles. It's very street as well. I mean, he's he's a little crook, for God's sake. So, I mean, of course, naturally, some of that is going to trickle down into him. So, my prediction for this, I got Dolo for the win. Now, I think this battle will be, this will be a difficult match for you, Law. Uh, Dolo's get off. And overall movement is better as far as staying in the pocket and maintaining that through his entire round. Um, U-Law's best moments, at least from what I've seen, um, best moments are often high-risk cap movements or combos, which can put his rounds in jeopardy um, if that's the scenario. Um, so like I said, I mean, it's not a situation to where like I don't think that U-Law can win, but I personally think that it's a bad matchup. Like when you're going up against people and your movements are high risk or material based, depending on whether they land or whether they're the timing or executed properly. And you're battling somebody that's not going to give you all that flash or that, you know, stuff like that is going to get in there and just try and like cause as much destruction as possible. That's dangerous. So, but it can also go the other way. You know what I'm saying? If Dolo gets in there and he's boring or if he's just very generic, I'm not saying that he is, but you know, if he gets in there and that's what he does and you log in there and capitalize it, you know, swags his life away, you know, you know, hits his ass with two or three moves or whatever the case may be and catches a few hat tricks, it can work out, you know? And we don't know what the approach is for these gentlemen, but that's my prediction. So I got um, Dolo for the win for that battle. Next battle we got, we got Warhead versus Jay Judge. Okay, Warhead, style heavy, buck, versatile as far as in terms of range of movement. Um, like I said, like very stylish, you know, very about like, you know, I'm, I'm gonna show you, like, you gonna feel me. Uh, don't want to necessarily say like cocky or conceited or anything like that, but it's still there's a certain flair to it. Very, I guess you could say flashy. Um, Jay Judge is very technical, material and combo based, sharp, and very musically inclined, and he's a rookie from the South. Um, so one thing to definitely note here is Jay Judge is, is a rookie. He just started. Um, he's been in the game for a little bit under, um, from what he, I think he said, like two years or so. Uh, but he's been a popper for 11 years. So one thing I think that a lot of people take for granted is that whenever how crumpers are taught to listen to music and how other genres of dancers are taught uh, music is that you're always supposed to be on beat no matter what you're doing. If you do get off beat or you switch up your cadence or, you know, whatever, or tempo, or whatever your movement, it needs to be somewhere in the beat, somewhere in the movement. That's not to say that Warhead ain't got that, but I just simply know based off of what I've seen Jay Judge do and what he's capable of being tattooed to the beat. Um, if y'all have ever heard that before, um, when it comes to rappers and stuff like that, that means that the, like the flow and the cadence is just effortless. Like it's just constantly on beat. I think that um, Jay Judge brings that. Again, 11 years as a popper, you're getting on beat. That's nothing. You know what I mean? So what's it going to be like, you know, of course, whenever he's able to pick his own tracks and control his own tempo. You know what I mean? Um, so my prediction for this, I had Warhead for the win. I think the versatility and experience will be the biggest factor here. 
Uh, Jay Judge might be able to pull off a win if he's damn near flawless, flawless. But I think Warhead has much more originality in Jay Judge uh, than Jay Judge can rebuttal this early in his career. Uh, it's, in my opinion, it's a classic match of stylish, you know, versus technical. You know what I mean? Um, I understand that they have their own styles per se, but like when we talk about like swag or charisma on the dance floor, I think um, and you know simply just atmosphere and control. I think that's going to be uh, one of the biggest um, tools that Warhead is going to be able to access uh, that Jay Judge does not particularly have at this time. So that's going to be a really really important factor. So based off of that, I had Warhead for the win again. Um, I think that has the potential to be a one round, depending on how it goes. Um, again, we're talking about we're talking about Jay Judge here. Like, it's one of Judge's little homies. Like, Judge is gonna have his little homies right. Material combos. Oh, it's nothing. It's nothing. Come on now. Like, let's, let's just be honest. So, and depending on you know whether um, whether Warhead you know gets him out of there in the first round, you know we don't know. So it's it's definitely up there. But I think that has the potential to be a one round battle. We'll see. Next battle we had, uh, so we had a switch up um, as far as the battle card. Now we have Zephra versus Royalty. So Royalty is definitely a power move, moves very strong, powerful movements, material heavy, buck, get lies alive as well. Uh, Zephra, heavily musically inclined, buck, very charismatic on the dance floor, and she's a rookie as well. She's also uh, a popper from Houston, you know, judges, a lot of judges, people, they all from the Ace Town represented. They are, they are from other genres of dance. So I don't know how much of a factor that's definitely going to play. But like I said before, um, if you watched her last battle versus uh, Lil Fanu, um, she was very tattooed to the beat, knew every drop, every moment was there through and through. So I definitely think that's something that may play a strong factor for her. Again, like I said, other genres of dance are not used to having pre-selected tracks or being able to dance, you know, for four minutes and set up moves and stuff like that. We're used to like capitalizing right then and there. So being able to set up your, your track, I don't know, we'll have to see. Um, so my prediction for that particular battle, um, I got royalty for the win. I think if we, uh, we get an old royalty, um, or a new and improved royalty, um, she'll win. And I mean that in terms of like that, like that aggressive, like, you know, that fighter, you know, royalty back like Rez, you know, Arizona, you know, stuff like that, like uh, Desert Storm, excuse me. Um, I think it'll, it'll definitely be there. Um, but if Ring Rush is a real thing, I believe Zephyr can steal a win due to her ability to perform and execute on a big stage, especially being... Um, uh, like I said, due to her her last battle with Lil F. Fanu. Experience plays a big factor here. I believe Royalty's style of crump is much more hard-hitting. Uh, but if Zephyr has improved her get-off, added some combos, I think we're in for a fight. I don't see a one-round happening in this particular battle. But again, I could be wrong. Like, it could go either way. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely... Um, I think Zephyr will definitely have improved uh, since the last time we saw her. That was in February. Last time we saw her battle, so I think it would be short-sighted of me to believe that she's just doing nothing the entire time um, and not improving like we all really should be preparing for these battles. So, um, so if royalty can capitalize, you know, if we we get that pit bull in the ring, I think she'll take the win. Um, so, but I don't see it a war round for that battle. I think I think that definitely has the potential to be one of the battles of the night. That's for sure. Next battle we got Reflex Arc versus Crypto. Shouts out to Kid Pun. I see you out there, Mississippi, doing your thug this. I ain't mad at you play it. Uh, so Reflex Arc is very combo, material heavy, buck, and live, and can be a little conceited on the dance floor. Again, we saw a little spring of that at the Rookies versus Vets whenever he battled Freakazoid. You know, can be a little arrogant on the dance floor, but again, I understand that's just competition. You know what I'm saying? That's crump. You know, we talk shit to people. That's just what we do. Uh, Crypto is raw, buck, and brash. And I believe he's a heavy hitter, if I'm not mistaken. Don't kill me. I don't know. Um, so my prediction for this particular battle, I'm going to say Crypto for the win. And I say Edge. Um, I think Crypto's hard-hitting style and raw get-off uh, will be the biggest factor against Reflex Arc. 
Um, there is a possibility of reflex arc coming out with a win or being able to come, you know, combat that intensity. Maybe if he has a few kill offs or combos in there, uh, crypto has the edge as far as like stage presence. So it will, it will definitely be an uphill battle for re reflex arc if I'm being completely, um, transparent, like crypto has like that original buck feel to it. Like, just like, yo, like that intensity that he brings, like them jabs is thrown at 110% every single time. Um, and he's Jay Project, so he gonna come prepared. I I would only assume he's going to. Um, so it, again, to say he wouldn't be, that'd be stupid of me to say. But that's gonna be the biggest thing because he's he's got that authentic buckness to him, like that. I don't care about how pre this looks. Like I'm gonna cause as, I'm gonna put as much pain in your life as much as I possibly can. So I think that's gonna be where the uphill battle is gonna be from him. Um, just that brash, like, you know, I don't know, fuck your feelings kind of mentality about about Crump. That's what I think he's going to bring to the table. And, and it showed with his last couple of battles as well. So um, I'm definitely edging it to crypto. And I'll say edge because I do think that Reflex Arc does bring a different, a lot, has a little bit more tools in the shed as far as to bring in terms of, like, material. Um, I think he's a little bit more versatile as far as in terms of movement. Um, he's younger, you know, I mean, them, them kids, they, they can move around, they can do whatever the hell they want. They can drop them, do a backflip, land on their head and just hop right back up. I don't know. It happens when you get old. You can't do that. I wake up in the morning, my back hurts for no reason. Uh, but it is what it is. So I think, um, crypto is going to pull out the win for that one. But again, I could be wrong. I like to be wrong. And that's, and that's the fam too. Like I'm twin Raven. He's kid pun. You know what I'm saying? So, no biases here. It is what it is. All right, so who else we got? Ah, yes. Lady Chosen versus Lil Encore. This is kind of the ones I definitely really want to see this battle. All right, so Lil Encore is Buck, musically inclined as well, conceptual, a brawler, and a young hitter. So, and then we have Lady Chosen, heavily character and style base, versatile with their style of movement uh, when it comes to Enigma and switching between Chosen. Um, so my prediction for this particular battle, I have Encore, a little Encore for the win. But only in the case if she's able to maintain the momentum of the battle. Now, Lady Chosen is very methodical and does not waste movements when it comes to her approach in her battles. Nothing, none of her movements are wasted. Like she ain't finna do like some overly dramatic movement without a particular reason. Um, I think it'll be, it'll definitely be a styles battle. Um, because again, like I said before, Lil Encore's style is more smash mouth, more in your face, you know, grungy. Like I'm, I'm, I'm here to crump. Like I'm gonna be right here in your face the entire time. But it can be a situation to where it's like, all right, well, if Lil Encore gasses out, or if she only hands out like maybe a, you know, a minute forty-eight or something like that, or close to two minutes or whatever the case may be, and Lady Chosen gets out there and just like takes her time and builds up around, just starts hitting her, you know, with material and concepts and combos and just you know mess playing with her, you know being intricate with the music you know it's a possibility that she can overwhelm her you know that chosen style is ex extremely flexible extremely flexible so i definitely don't think it's anything to play with um but i think this has the potential to be a one round or a kill off battle i definitely believe that if it turns into a classic i'm, I'm not mad at that i would definitely enjoy that either way but i think Given these two dancers, I think we we should expect the one rounder because they're they're two very original dancers. Like there aren't people that that dance like them. Of course, like you know what I'm saying chosen fam stuff like that. But um, she's the only one of that of that fam on this card. So that style is definitely something to behold whenever you watch it. If you've never seen it before, you in for a treat. 
So, and like I said, a little encore is, is ain't no pushover. Again, very musically inclined, always on beat. This is definitely gonna be there, and she chooses her moments moments wisely. So, I think she definitely makes up uh, in that in terms of like for execution of her movement. So, we'll definitely see how that goes. But I do have a little encore for the win. Um, I do think she has more experience and is used to main stage battles. So, we shall see. Next battle we got Kaki Kid versus City Rock. Now this one is gonna be steep, hella steep. So Kaki Kid is extremely buck, caddy, material heavy, brings a complete package um, whenever he battles. And I don't mean like, you know, he's the most versatile or complete dancer in the world. I'm saying that he covers all areas. He can do all areas, get on the ground, material, combos, get live, get buck, hat tricks, da 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 da, -da. go down the line, be abstract. Come on now, stop, stop playing with me. Okay, put some respect on Kaki Kid's name. And then we have City Rock, who's extremely versatile, powerhead, unorthodox, with the potential to kill off. Um, so for this predict prediction, I have Kaki Kid for the win. I think Kaki Kid brings more consistency, um, complete rounds uh, to the battle. City Rock brings a lot of variables to this battle. He moves more fluidly and has some combos that can result in a kill off if executed at the right time. Uh, best example, great example, is battle against Varian, which was an extremely tight battle. Extremely tight battle. Um, the only hurdle I see for City Rock is if he can maintain the momentum throughout the entire round. Sometimes in between movements, he has a lot of downtime or slip ups because of the high risk uh, movements that he does. Um, but when they land, ah, Oh, when they land, when they land. Overall, I think Kaki Kid brings more consistency. Um, I think this battle definitely has the ability to potentially be a one round battle. I think it's gonna be a race um, to see who's the best version of themselves. Like I said, Kaki Kid is extremely versatile and, and brings a lot of aspects in his crump. Um, again, like I said, disclaimer, not saying that he's the best in the world or stuff like that, but I definitely know that he's had great mentors and big homies and teachers, um, and it shows in his craft. Um, so in his approach, um, is definitely of that as somebody who's learned a lot over, um, his time at Crump and City Rock as well. City Rock is, is powerful, like his unorthodox movements. Like you, I don't want to say you can't predict them, but there are movements that, um, that you just would not, not normally see from people, especially someone that's stocky um, like him. He kind of reminds me of uh, 08. If you don't know who 08 is, he's a very powerful dancer, um, heavy hitter out here in the South, and he's, he's been in the game for quite some time. Shouts out to 08. And that's no disrespect to City Rock or anything like that, but there are not a lot of small guys that, that are like around their body type that possess that kind of power that they bring. Um, so I think City Rock is extremely dangerous. And like I said, some of the movements that you see from him or the hat tricks or combos at him like have an extremely high kill off potential. So Kaki Kid, don't play with this. Like, don't get out there and play, bro. Come out there ready to kill. Every round, there needs to be, you need to be trying to end it. Same with City Rock as well. Come out there with your best shoes on, play Best shoes on. So, but I, I have Cocky Kid for the win. Um, yeah. Next battle, we got C4 versus Beast Hype. Uh, so, C4 is extremely technical, material based, and combo heavy. Is an OG from the South. Uh, Beast Hype is conceptual, abstract, and really good at storytelling. Now, I think he's an OG. I'm not quite sure. Don't quote me. I heard it in one of his battles, so mm, I could be wrong. Either way. But from my prediction for this battle, I got Beast Hype for the win. Uh, Beast Hype's, I would say Beast Hype's base, his approach to battling is just simply different. Um, it presents of uh, putting C4 in a defensive position as far as in terms of having to um, rebuttal the rounds, if that makes sense. Um, I mean, it can be a situation to where if C4 goes first and sets the... Uh, you know, sets the pace or sets the tone for the rounds. So it's perfectly fine. That could work as well. Uh, but in terms of like, if the beast hype goes first, um, his approach is different. Like it's going to showcase a lot of different things that Cortez doesn't do. Um, I'm sorry, C4, my bad. 
Um, so that, that's really important, um, at least for beast hype. And I think that's something that's notable that Court C4 should pay attention to um, when it comes to his battle, when he battles him. You know, beast hype is very, 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 very um, unorthodox in the way he, his body movements. Like, he does stuff that I don't do. Like, his last battle against Maine, or not his last battle, but one of the battles I saw against Maine, like, you know, he's over here doing headstands on his elbow and stuff like that. And he's really good as far as storytelling and really drawing context as far as, like, what he's trying to portray in his round. So I think that's important. So um, if this is a situation to where Corte C4 does approach this battle in a linear way, um, then I think, you know, he's in for a long night. I definitely believe if we get an old C4 or we get a new and improved C4, I think he can pull it off in terms of, uh, you know, execution, timing. I mean, he's got it's there. He's a well, he's a where he's, you know, he's OG in the game. So it cannot be in the way. Um, but I don't predict any kill offs or one rounds for this particular battle. Um, so with that being said, I have B type for the win. Next battle we got, we got Slim versus Rizo. All right, so Slim is conceptual, heavily character-based, liveness, unorthodox, and is a Southern veteran. Rizo has a raw style of crunk, live, and very smash mouth, and very beefy. And he's a rookie from Houston. Again, shouts out to Houston. I ain't even hating on you. Uh, my prediction for this is I edge Slim for the win. I think this battle is debatable. It can go either way for both sides. Both versatile in terms of realms of overall movement and character. I think Slim brings more material and concepts to the battle and has an edge in terms of styles in his pocket. Formerly the old Young Pun, now newly the new Lil Fury. Uh, but Rizo, I would say, capitalizes on the moment better based off of his last battle against Reborn. If you haven't seen that battle, I would definitely recommend going to see that. The battle was tight as hell. Uh, this is another battle where if we get a classic slim or a new and improved slim, I think he'll win. You know, if we're able to get, you know, the kind of that jungle liveness or if we get like a different, like extremely well prepared slim, I think he can pull it off. Um, but at the same time, you like Rizo is, is nice. He's, you know, from what he was telling me, he was taking some private classes from Spartan previously this year. So, yeah, do what you will with that information. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, Rizo is better as far as like capitalizing on a moment and maintains it. Like his stamina does not wane throughout his rounds unless he, he chooses to slow down. He's young. You know, he got that young man stamina. It, it is what it is. Like not all of us have, we all old. So we got to prepare weeks in advance, take vegan smoothies and all that other stuff, clear your system and whatnot, but not this young man. Okay. That, that momentum is A1. He's, he's definitely going to be extremely deadly, you know, in a few years here uh, with the right opportunities and the right training. So, uh, but I think, I believe Slim edges this battle. Uh, his experience will play a big factor. And like I said, the versatility of, of styles and creativity that he can pull from will be the biggest uh, factors here as far as for the win. So that one's kind of up in the air. So that's really on you. Uh, next battle we got Two on two. We got Bruce and Prince Flesh Killer versus Dice and Kirby. So we got Brute, who's recently coming back to the game. Welcome back, good sir. It's Buck. Flashy. Got a little cattiness in it, and he's a rookie from the South. Then we got Prince uh, Flesh Killer. It's extremely versatile. Smash Mouth. Heavily character based and a well rounded rookie. This kid is, is very dangerous. Every time that he dances, he goes on tear. So, uh, then of course we have on the other side, on the other two on two, we have Dice, who's extremely theatrical, material heavy, and catty. And then we have Kirby, who is very raw, theatrical, and conceptual. So for this battle, I'm a little confused. So I may need some clarity on it. If this is a one-on-one -on -one battle, my prediction goes in favor of Brute. And Prince Flesh Killer. And when I mean one on one battle, is it gonna be like a one, 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 one? Or is this gonna be like a, okay, y'all have a one round individually by yourself and then you have to do one round together? That's the question I have. Like that, I, I, need, I definitely need that, that answer. Because if that's the case, 
if it's an actual two on two and they have to work together as far as one particular round, then I personally, I'm going to go in favor of Dyson Kirby. They're in the same fam. Similar styles. Makes sense. Same big homie. Why not, right? So, I think Brute and Prince's style is more hard-hitting and to the point. And Dice and Kirby can't do the same as far as in terms... Well, I won't say they can't do the same, but that's not their niche. As far as like that in-your-face, hard-hitting, get-off, raw crump in-your-face, that's not their niche. Now, as far as in terms of being creative... Showing different levels, layers of crunk, creativity. I think they take it. So, it has the potential to be... I think either way this goes, it's going to be a one-sided battle. Whoever gets to that point first. Whoever takes control first. Again, you have on one side, you have Brute, Prince Flesh Killer... In your face, hard hitting crump. Then you have more of a theatrical, and conceptual dancers with Kirby and Dice. I think it can, it can go either way. Um, but like I said before, if this is an actual tag match, I go with Dice and Kirby. If it's just a one 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 one, I'm gonna go with uh, Brute and Prince Flesh Killer. So. I don't see how it could possibly happen, but I don't think a kill off is going to happen in this particular. I don't, I don't, I don't see that happening. I just, I don't, I don't see that happening. Next battle we got. So we got Kill Bill versus Hybrid. Now, this is my personally my favorite battle of the night. So we have Kill Bill being extremely uncharacteristic, unorthodox, and conceptual. And from what I I think he would be a young hitter now. I know that the West Coast y'all got different rules and stuff like that. He might still be classified as a, you know, as like a, a rookie, you know, y'all start my ain't knocking, I ain't tripping, you know, but he maybe young hitter, maybe some, you know, maybe some, nope, nope, okay, whatever. Then we got Hybrid, who's extremely beefy, extremely beefy. Like this man will talk shit to you your entire round. It doesn't matter if he's, if he, if he, if you know that he's losing, he's going to talk shit the entire time. Period. No question. Um, material and combo heavy and very smooth and precise. Like his precision is, is, is A1. I don't think I've ever seen him mess up on any movements or material. Um, this one, in my opinion, is too close to call. It could go either way. I think this battle will simply come down to who's simply better in the rounds. Both even on, on uh, both sides of the board in terms of skill. The only difference I see here is the range of mo uh, movement as far as for Kill Bill. Kill Bill is definitely extremely um, more diverse as far as like how he moves throughout his round, as far as changing levels, getting on the ground. Um, and then, of course, with stamina, uh, hybrid uh, definitely takes it in terms of like moving awareness or stamina, in my opinion. Um, I believe there's a high level of kill off or one round capabilities in this particular battle. That's just me. That's what I'm thinking. So we gonna have to see with that one. That one, I, I don't have an opinion. I don't know. So it can go either way. Of course, the main event that we have for the evening, we have Project versus No One. All right, so Project being extremely conceptual, athletic, theatrical, heavily character-based, and extremely well-rounded. Uh, no One being theatrical, conceited, unorthodox, and extremely musically inclined. I see you, bro. I see you. I, I see what you're doing. Stop playing with me. So for this prediction, I have Project for the win. I believe Project Style of Crump is extremely flexible for opponents um, in these battles, especially when, uh, like those whose former style, Moody Rex, uh, who presented tricks, materials, and combos, um, who he's now actually baby ripped now. Uh, now, with that, will that be the deciding factor for this battle? Who knows? Because is he going to change his style? Is he going to be kind of going through that, that awkward phase as far as like learning something new? Um, or will he apply... You know, all the new information that which he's getting and simply just save like a lot of those movements or information that he had whenever he was twin Moody Rex and just simply put them in different environments. Who knows? Uh, some people, even sometimes the best, some people throw away, you know, old tools that they use. They're not using anymore. Um, and again, style rippers. Who knows? 
So I think that's definitely a toss up um, as far as in, in that regard, whether he's simply going to. If it's going to be a complete style change or is it going to be a combination of bringing the two together? And if we're being honest, I mean, this just happened like what less than like two, two weeks ago or something like that. You know, you got a month away today to the battle. I don't think it's going to be that quick. But again, I am putting none past the young man. Um, it's clear that Project is proficient as far as stacking material while maintaining the momentum of his round. Given how experienced he is in the main stage, um, I think he'll pull off the win. Um, I'm personally not putting anything past um, no one. Because again, like I said, the man is, is clearly has an extreme, extreme, extreme talent. Um, as far as like adapting to styles. We saw how proficient he was with the Moody Rex style. He looked exactly like Rex and Moody. And again, that's, that's hats off to him. Like taking that information in and then being able to um, articulate or execute that on the dance floor, high level. So I predict that this is an extremely high, high level for kill off or one round. I just see it. I don't think neither one of these gentlemen are going to come here to play. So why would you? So that's all it is for day one. We're going to have to see what happens. Because that one right there. I'm about to take, a, take a sip on that one. Don't worry, it's just water. So that's it for day one. We might have to get a jump.